Welcome back for another video. Today's video will be about the Bassette Grande Gang. In 2009, Bassette Grande was described as a gang with 350 members of a different affiliations. Some are hardcore, some are associates, others are taggers whose association with the gang is sort of like the minor leagues. Rudy Latasha, also known as Tito, was a member of the Bassette Grande Gang in the San Gabriel Valley. Louis Gomez, also known as Trigger, was a former member of the Bassette Grande Gang. Gomez and Latasha grew up in the same neighborhood, and Gomez testified that he had seen Latasha maybe a handful of times over the years. Due to safety concerns, Gomez dropped out of the gang while serving a prison sentence and was placed in protective custody. After his release from prison in 2010, Gomez began selling methamphetamine in his neighborhood. In 2013 or 2014, Gomez began providing information to the police to avoid arrest for minor infractions. On occasion, the LAPD paid Gomez in exchange for information. After Gomez's testimony at Latasha's preliminary hearing, he entered into a leniency agreement with the district attorney's office, whereby he would be sentenced to one year in jail for his gun possession case in exchange for testifying in Latasha's case. In mid-January of 2016, Gomez was in his front yard with a friend, Wolfie, when a white truck pulled up. Latasha was in the passenger seat and yelled at Wolfie to take flight on Gomez and get him because Gomez was a PC and no good. A PC is a gang dropout, in a green lighter, which is somebody the gang wants to hurt. To take flight means to beat somebody up. Wolfie did not comply. Maribel Montoyo. Gomez's girlfriend observed the incident through a window. On January 28, 2016, Gomez was in front of his house flying a drone airplane with his friend Navarro. Montoya drove to Gomez's house and parked in the driveway. Shortly thereafter, Gomez saw a silver car drive up and stop in front of his house. Latasha was hanging out at one of the windows, shooting a gun. Latasha aimed the gun at Gomez, but Montoya was between them. As Gomez ran toward his house, he heard 9 or 10 gunshots. Gomez was shot in the thigh and ankle. Montoya was shot once in the leg, and Navarro, who had been between Latasha and Gomez at one point during the shooting, suffered a grazed wound to the leg. Montoya identified Latasha in a six-pack photo display and stated she was 100% sure that Latasha was the shooter. Montoya testified that she saw Latasha in the car pointing a gun at her and recognized his chin tattoo. Although it was dark outside, the car was lit by a nearby light pole. On February 8, 2016, Gomez was driving in Bassett Grande territory when he saw Latasha standing on the front corner. Latasha pointed a gun at Gomez and shot several times. There were eight bullet holes in Gomez's car, including some in the area of the driver's side door. Deputies responded to the scene and discovered one bullet casing in the street. The police determined that this casing and the casings recovered from the January 28 shooting had all been fired from the same gun. Gomez testified he was 100% sure that Latasha was the person who shot him. Rudy Latasha was convicted of the January 28, 2016 attempted murder of Louis Gomez, the January 28, 2016 assault with a firearm against Maribel Matoya. He was sentenced to a term of 23 years and eight months, plus 107 years to life. In 2009, the month of June, there were 11 of 24 shootings connected to the Bassett Grande gang. Michael Alexis Gudiel, a one-time Montebello resident, died after being shot to death at 3.15 a.m. Sunday morning in the 13900 block of Proctor Avenue. Cops responding to a call shots fired arrived on scene to find Gudio dead in the street. In 2011, gang injunctions were filed for the Bassett Grande and Puente 13. The injunctions prohibits members from conjugating in the prescribed zone. One June evening 2009, victim Adrian Luna and a companion were walking to a neighborhood shopping center. Luna and his companion belonged to the Bassett Grande gang, and the shopping center sat in territory claimed by their gang. A car pulled up alongside Luna at the stop sign. Luna and his companion gestured with gang signs toward the car, waving their hands in the air and bringing them down in front of them. Joseph Henry Hernandez got out of the car. Joseph belonged to an enemy gang, La Puente, whose territory bordered Bassett Grande's territory. Joseph yelled, La Puente! and fired his gun four or five times, seriously wounding Luna. Joseph returned to the car, which sped away. A private security guard who saw the shooting followed the speeding car, which crashed when it failed to make a turn. The security guard captured Joseph and held him until police arrived and took him into custody. 
Joseph Hernandez was convicted and sentenced to 40 years to life in prison. Milo, a Lisette Grande gang member, residence, was targeted by police for a search warrant during the investigation to the gang. Police found two revolvers that same day. Richard was placed in an interview room with fellow Bassett Grande gang member Carlos Guesada. They talked about how he and fellow gang members Adam Tercero and Sal Huguez had chased members of the Mongols gang who were driving motorcycles through Bassett Grande territory. They abandoned the chase when they spotted a police car. He and his fellow gang members then picked up two 357 caliber revolvers, a 22 caliber pistol, and a shotgun from Huguez's house. They took the single action 357 caliber magnum revolver. They decided to pursue a man and a woman riding a motorcycle who were dressed like bikers and who they believed were Mongols. They pulled up alongside and rolled down the car windows and shot at the couple. He believed that he killed a man and injured the woman, who he said was wearing a black jacket that said, Mongol Pride. Richard also said that the man had patches of shit. Richard first told Quisada that the shooting occurred on a Sunday, then corrected himself to say it happened on the Friday before Valentine's Day in 2004. Richard Leonard Jeremilo was sentenced to state prison on count one for a life term with a 15 year minimum parole eligibility period plus an enhancement of 25 years to life. On December 31st, 2009, Javier Rodriguez was hosting a New Year's Eve party at his home. Attending the party were Sylvia Galvez, the mother of Hernandez's two children, also attending were the children of Michael Espana. Hernandez was across the street attending a gathering at his uncle's house. Hernandez and Galvez were estranged. When Hernandez saw Galvez, he asked if he could see his children. Galvez said no because Hernandez was drunk. Hernandez was wearing a shirt with a picture of an owl and the words Night Owl. The Night Owl is a symbol of the Bassett Gang. After midnight, Espana decided to walk home about half a mile away. Espana was drunk and Rodriguez wanted to drive him home. Espana refused Rodriguez's offer and began to walk. Rodriguez walked with them. As they walked, the two men arguably loud about Rodriguez driving Espana home. Hernandez and Aguro were standing in the driveway of Hernandez's uncle's home. When Espana and Rodriguez walked by still arguing, Rodriguez knew Hernandez because of Hernandez's prior relationship with Galvez. Rodriguez had seen Aguro in the neighborhood a couple months prior, but they had not spoken. Hernandez made eye contact with Espana. Hernandez approached Espana and said, what are you saying? Rodriguez told Hernandez that Espana is drunk and he was trying to get him home. Hernandez replied, F that fool, and he shouldn't be disrespecting me, Hernandez said. You don't know who I am. I'm a set. Hernandez began punching Espana. Espana tried to punch back, but he had a large bandana cut on his right hand. None of the punches Espana attempted with his left hand hit Hernandez. Oguro got into the fight and began punching Espana. Both men hit and kicked Espana as he fell to the ground. Rodriguez pulled a girl off Espana. As Rodriguez was pulling a girl off, Hernandez pulled a knife from his waistband. He began stabbing Espana. Rodriguez let go of her girl to grab Hernandez. A girl was about three feet away from Hernandez. Rodriguez grabbed Hernandez from behind and pulled him to the ground. Rodriguez was cut in the process. Espana began to walk away, but he collapsed. As Espana walked away, Hernandez turned to Rodriguez and said, you better take care of this because if you don't, I'm going to take care of you and your family. Rodriguez took that to men, don't call the police and don't make anything of it. Don't make it bigger or something bad will happen to me and my family. Espana later died of his wounds. Oguera told Hernandez, let's get out of here. Let's go, let's go. Come on, man. Hernandez drove away with Oguera in the passenger seat. Hernandez attacked Espana because he thought Espana was giving him a dirty look and it was mad dogging. Galvez said in response to the perceived mad dogging, Hernandez declared he is from Bassett and this is his neighborhood. Christopher Hernandez was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. Carl Katsumi Ogura, guilty of first degree murder, was sentenced to 25 years to life for the murder and a consecutive 10 year term for the gang allegation.